Yes, it's Mandalore once again. Hello, everyone. I have Fable here with me for a quick reaction to this. Because you guys I just like... woke up. You just, just woke... woke up five minutes ago, and Max forcing me to react. Save me. I'm in you the can. base. <laughs> <laughs> Don't nah, worry, Platy will be. <laughs> oh, you did. Okay. Don't worry, Platy will be joining you soon. Cries. So what are we reviewing with dear old Mandalore? Uh, Ghostmaster. It's apparently an old spooky game that I never heard about. It looks like it was on the the old Xbox. I don't remember actually. Now with the title Ghostmaster, it makes me think you'd actually be a Ghostbuster, basically. I love there the are plenty of games team. that put you on the receiving end of a haunting, you know, but none but, of but does busting make you feel good? Yes. Okay. Put you in control of one. I ain't afraid of no ghosts. ghosts. Halloween is right around the corner, and mm. this is one of the most Halloween games ever made. Yeah, it honestly. The properties and the fun side of all of them. Mm. Even when this does make me want to do like creature features, where we have a bunch of superheroes based off of you know the old style, like monster mash. Some grizzlier titles. Unfortunately, this is not one of those games aging gracefully on the technical side. Oh, it was dear. already rough at launch, but some issues like compatibility mm. have gotten even trickier. So now we've got to treat our shit up. For starters, this is a 4x3 game, which isn't a problem of its own, unless the game is displayed stretched out anyways. The menus yeah. and UI stuff getting stretched a bit is fine, but the game itself being stretched does suck. If it does play nice yeah. in 4x3, that's great, but still not ideal for a strategy game. You gotta keep yeah, definitely. For a strategy game, like being stretched out in a shooter would probably be okay, except for like if everything's stretched out. But in this, it's uh. In rooms and some maps can be gigantic, so more game on screen is ideal. Other problems you think technology would brute force away, like performance drops, are still around. And not oh, little no. missing frames that you have to be trained to the gamer's Nexus Dojo to notice. I mean PowerPoint slideshows. Oh. Beyond that, it's just a buggy game. To the degree that some ghost powers are flat out broken and don't have any effect. There are plenty oh. of reasons why it's like this. The engine went through a rewrite mid-development. Oh wow, time. an engine rewrite mid-development. For those who don't know, uh, writing an engine is basically like literally making a car engine. And also learning another language. Oh boy. So, here's the thing. You'd never want to... This is a, something we do in the industry now, which is why most AAA games are sh are terrible. I was going to say shit, but... Uh, well, yeah, they are shit. Uh, if you replace people mid-development, it's basically like saying, Okay, this, per this engine was made by someone else. You have no idea how to work it. Good luck. That's why you don't replace... That's why you don't replace developers mid-session. So many ghosts and levels were cut, and some ghosts were just thrown into other levels. And the original release ended on a sudden cliffhanger. It's one of those games that got dangerously close to not existing. Oh. This is where the Complete Edition mod comes in, which is fantastic and still actively being worked on. Cool. The base version includes lots of fixes. And widescreen, the UI is still stretched. This feels like a very but most uh, Raikoi game. World also, give me one second, I have to check something. Fable oh, Entertainment no, reviewers. Oh no, everyone, he's gone. Um, so how are you all doing? Anyway, sorry, uh, I had to do that real quick. Anyway, back power. to the review. Uh, crashing and other egregious bugs are fixed, <laughs> but many remain. Performance in the iffy maps is better than vanilla, but Ooh. it still has its hiccups. It's an ongoing process, and there is another update coming in a month or so that'll fix even more of this. But even as is, it's still a huge improvement over vanilla. It also has lots of optional additions like challenge modes, oh. restored ghosts, and brand new Restored members. ghosts. A lot of them were on disc but inaccessible. That's a lot so of ghosts. are just in your Ghost roster ghosts. now. But no, Azrael! Documents. What the? That's just Ghost Rider without a head. <laughs> Concept art, talking oh, to developers, Lord. and other clues. Uh. They've begun to outright restore some characters from scratch. Oh, wow. I only enabled them through my second run of the game, but they it's do It's strange how short. some of these little games that I've never heard of get so much love online. It's insane. It makes me wish that more indie developers were like this and made crazier design. Well, actually, the indie part of video game making is where you see some of the most interesting and outlandish ideas for video games which 
usually sometimes work. Well, I mean, uh, there was a there was an older game, uh, uh, Knight, Knights of the Old Republic two. Basically, because of the time limit that the game actually had for development, it we got a we got an incomplete game with a lot of bugs. Years later, a couple modders actually were able to bring back a lot of the original content. Not everything completely, but with the mo- with the unofficial mods we got for it, like the official patches, they were able to basically fix the game and bring it back to what it was originally planned, which is a huge step up if you actually ever played the unpatched version and the patched one. It's great. Oh. The only problem is when we got it for uh, the Nintendo Switch, because the fan-made patch was made by fans and copyright reasons, they could never officially make, uh, make good on their promises. Yeah. Which pissed off a lot of people for obvious reasons, but at the same time, the the fan-made patch was never supposed to be a thing because it wasn't made by developers. It was made by the fandom. Yeah. And, and the company that said that they... The problem is, though, the company that was going to port it to the Switch is just like, yes, we will, in fact, add that patch as well. Oh, so they, they made a promise... Yeah, they made a promise they could not keep. They basically lied about it. And then oh, when wonderful. then when they made an announcement saying that they couldn't, and here's the reasons why, everyone's just like, you pretty much lied to us. And they're like, yes, but it's not our fault, is pretty much what the statement said. Oh my god, and I hate... That's, just like, that's what yeah. companies do all the time now. They say, we hear you, but it's not our fault, and you shouldn't be angry at us. Pretty much, and last time I heard someone was was supposedly going to try to sue them, I don't think that worked out because they actively lied, but I honestly think that never panned out, but yeah, a lot of the fans were mad, rightfully so, because they, prom- they made a literal promise they could not keep at all. And yeah, it's just like, that's not a good thing. It's really not. Which sucks, cause uh, which sucks, cause uh, Knights of the Old Republic two in the first game are really good, except I feel like two gives you more variety in terms of combat and stuff, and people love two. I myself love the second one. It's just because of development hell and the fact that they had a time limit, it didn't come out as well as it could have. Yeah, it's a shame, honestly. It's a true. But what can you do? Too. Yeah. What can you do? Also, I want to say one more thing. If you guys like this new format that I'm doing, please tell me, so, and we might use it more. If you don't, we'll just go back to the old one. Mm-hmm. You'll see it in this video. Rabel doesn't you know what I'm talking hunters, about. Grab the complete edition. Now that you know the magic I of don't. the install wizard, mm. let's start the game properly. I've been in the basement. <laughs> Oh, so I'm trying to force Platy into the VC. We'll see what happens. Ghostmaster takes place in the unassuming oh town Lord. of Gravenville. Great amenities, nice Gravenville. people, and four billion ghost spe- Isn't that great? It's, uh, it's always Gravenville. Ghostmaster something. takes place in the unassuming town of Gravenville. Great amenities, nice people, and roughly four billion ghosts beyond the veil. Four billion. With so many there, the local haunting committee has assigned you to be the Ghostmaster. You command the spirits during oh, hauntings dear. and help expedite the eviction process for the mortals. During oh. off hours, you take a more traditional management role. All the undead can be trained and upgraded more at your home base, the Ghoul Room. So you the get to experience room. feeling dead while working in management. And that about does it. There is a story. Imagine being undead very... while also working in management still. Aw, oh, that sounds like hell. Yeah. Which is fine, because this is a game about driving people to madness with bagpipes. <laughs> like driving people to madness with bagpipes. Sounds like something Platy oh. would do. Visually, it's a simple and cartoony game, and that's all it had to be. The environments don't have much that are striking or unique about them, but it does serve as good grounding since your employees will shake things up. Hmm. Most maps will be fairly static and bright unless you decide to cut the power to them. There are some levels that lean more into it being creepy, but not too far. Again, you're the one it's, doing the haunting, so it's the like game ca- isn't... It's like Casper's the Friendly Ghost, more or less, is what I'm seeing with these visuals. Also a bit of Sims. Mm-hmm remotely trying to scare you. You're basically the eldritch force that's attacking oh. the world of the Sims. That's what I thought. All of the NPCs can actually have a lot of interactions with their environment, with plenty of animations oh. for everything in between. And that's exactly what you want to nail for this. 
When you start disrupting a TV, characters stop dancing, one goes over to check what's happening. The yeah. game is structured in a way where you usually can't bring out your big scares early and have to build up to them. So that the makes NPCs sense. have plenty of mundane fish tank activities to do, until things begin happening that confuse them and then terrify them. You can oh. use powers or hints in their bio to learn about their specific fears, but just watching them can give you a lot of info. But you don't need to be a scare scientist to learn mm -hmm. that people have an inherent fear of suddenly being on fire. <laughs> so there's a lot of reactivity in- <laughs> That's true. <laughs> The only person not to break, afraid to be on fire is probably Platy, but that's because I've set him on fire several times, and and he's only screamed out in pain, not in fear. Oh my goodness gracious! In the world and its people for what mm -hmm. you do, and that's a good chunk of the entertainment value. It's like being a kid with a hose and an ant hill, but instead oh. you fill the ant hill with courage, the cowardly dog villains. You even have the. That's actually a wonderful the analogy. <laughs> Filling an anthill with Curse the Cowardly Dog Louise, villains. Just to have a better view of the chaos. Oh my Even God. sleeping characters who will dream of sheep until you assign them a sleep specialist. Oh, a sleep RLS specialist. is now the least of your worries. Literally a ghost sent All in All the animation to... is the focus yeah. and the strong point. All of the bizarre and violent powers you have and the world's reaction to them. The graphics weren't winning any awards even back then, but it's effective for what it's set out to do, even if it can be janky. Yeah, you're supposed to leave the ghosty ghost. The sound of the game is- Do you know what that sound bite is from? <laughs> I'm not actually sure. Where from what it? I know, from what I've heard, Mandor uses it a lot. And apparently it's from Home Alone 1, where one of them grabs a doorknob that's electrified and they turn to a skeleton for a second. <laughs> <laughs> oh my lord. <laughs> Overall in a similar I don't spot. know why he the loves that sound bite, but he does. But most of the focus is on the ghosts and their powers. Nothing too noteworthy there. Oh, swallow. Powers. Shatter song. Shattering song. What is amazing is the game's music and how it's paced out with everything else. It's playful all the way through and sounds like something they'd play during a comedy silent movie. The beginning of a haunting just has a few stingers here and there, and then at the end, it's pure chaos. Well, that makes sense. You have the usual, like, organ playing sound. Like, you just see a ghost with a Tommy gun. And now we got the piano. We should have this background for Halloween stuff. I can find it. It has fantastic energy to it and really brings the whole game together. It's one of those games that you just cannot imagine with a different soundtrack. Ooh. Beyond Sims Gobbledygook, there's also oh. a lot of voice acting from the ghosts themselves. You'll come across many that you can free during the missions, and they all have their stories to tell. Mm. Hello, sir, or madam, or, well, whatever you are. Can I interest you in our range of facial care products? I never met. You're dead. You can't, <laughs> you can't interest me in anything. Because you can't grab anything. You don't have anything. Anyway. To tell. Just a really Hello, good sir. salesperson. I kind of doubt it, or, considering well, they're dead. Are. Can I interest you in our range of facial care products? I never meant to kill no one, but I guess I did, and I guess I deserve the cheer because of it. Hey, dude. What? <laughs> oh my god. I didn't mean to kill no one, brother. What do you call it when my three geekazoid friends hold a seance for me? Nerdromancy! Hey! <laughs> I killed me, man! Well, I didn't know you were in the game, Fable. <gasps> so rude. <laughs> oh, look. If you could help us, maybe I could come work for you. Bet you don't see many tricksters with gams like these, huh? What the, what the fuck? <laughs> was that just a... <laughs> was that a furry ghost bunny? That was, maybe. That was coming on to the ghost master? <laughs> Yeah, it's definitely a furry ghost, buddy. I, uh... Fuck, is that even a ghost? I'm... Well, <laughs> what a ghost master actually controls is a white ring. What? Why are we moving on? That's so funny. Moving on. I think. Gaia ghost, which has genuine love of humanity. She is very confused as why her friends tend to end up in a white padded room, but she doesn't let it bother her. Oh, she's basically one of the ghosts that shows herself to mortals and people... Like, constantly tell them up that she's real, but... They're... But there's something fishy. Maybe that's what turned... 
Maybe that's what turned Fable into a furry. Happening he saw the ghost characters. furry. What the hell? Totally. As for the gameplay, you've got a lot of options. The missions are all structured around the terror campaign. Oh, I like written. this. It's You'll like a pop-up book. Assignments, which you can choose the order of. That's From there, cool. you choose which GSG-9 ghouls you want on your team, though the game can recommend which ones to use for you. From here, you've got your supply of ectoplasm. It's oh my god, I just realized he's doing like a rehash of that song, Staying Alive. It's a capped meter that you spend by summoning ghosts to the field and using more elaborate powers. Oh if you're making everyone shit their pants, your plasm cap goes up. But if they start calming down, it starts decreasing. Ah. It doesn't go down very quickly, but plasm is still the easiest way to own zone yourself. Because during a mission, you can redeploy and move ghosts around all you want, and it saves the powers they're using. So if you redeploy a ghost using powers above the cap, your power is overexerted, and you have Flower seconds power. until you Oh, they die. grow plants. That That's one was high enough to people. actually make it two seconds. Unless told otherwise, ghosts are constantly using the powers you oh, told he's them making to. It, so the ghost is apparently making it rain fish in that house. Careful I, I, rotating I, them in and out. Okay. See, the NPCs have their fear and madness meters, but also the belief meter. That oh. means you can initially use cheaper spirits to help build the groundwork. You make electronics freak out, change the weather, maybe have yeah. an object or two fly off the shelf. It's all about weakening the mortals by learning their fears, picking away at their sanity, and driving them apart. They're more likely to calm mm, down so if this they is what up, Pliety does every day. Well enough, you could also get in a good group scare. Then you keep building plasm for more options. You need to milk this acroid slime as much as you can because you are operating under several limits. Most of your team can't be placed wherever you want, they need to be attached to a specific fetter. Some okay. spirits only vibe with objects attached to violence and murder, your gremlins only want to go in electronics, some ghosts only like mirrors, and elementals will only go in their matter of choice. Okay. And those especially get questionable, but <laughs> the they're still funny. Skeleton. Plus, some objects count as multiple fetter types. It turns out that if you're in the spirit world, a war memorial is like an all-you-can-eat buffet, making it a good- What the hell? <laughs> Actually, that does make sense. It's staging ground for lighting any wannabe exorcists on fire. Oh. Beyond strategizing using fetters, powers themselves can also synergize. Like multiple Ooh. ghosts affecting the weather can create a more violent storm, or one spirit causes a leak in a flood while another causes a power surge. Beyond being a great way to stack up mm -hmm. fear and madness, this is also what you need to do to get a bigger roster. Missions mm. can have multiple beings trapped in them, which require very specific actions to free. Oh. If you do, they join you for the mission, and then permanently are added to your roster. Cool. You do get some automatically as the campaign goes on, but there are a lot of freaks you can add to your collection. And they all oh. have a lot of character and powers to find, so it does feel worth the effort. At There's least a, it does uh, most crazy of the time, ghosts. since some can get very convoluted to unlock. Like, scare away every nurse until this man goes down to the morgue in the basement. This is a big map they ask you to do this in, but even if oh. you do skip out on a few, there are plenty of others to find. Though I would have liked to follow up on some of their motivations. A Anyways, the mission goal is usually to scare everyone away. Others shake things up by having you scare someone specific away, but you know what you're here for. How quickly you do this, how well you stack your Amityville wombo combos and more will determine your score. Amityville. A better score gives you more gold plasm, okay. which you can use at the ghoul room between missions. Beyond already running an undead army, each haunter has multiple powers to choose from. And you don't need to worry about losing Ooh, something spider. Cool, as I don't want to go spider, monsters, thank you very so much. Ghosts can have similar powers. It's but still good to have favorites, and there are cool. better. No! They're not. I was sent a po I would push him with my ghost boot. Mac, we need to summon Ike Claw and his spider army. He doesn't have a spider army! Then who am I thinking from freaking uh, Warhammer uh, 3 Total War, or whatever it's called? Because I remember there's literally a- I think there's literally a, a hero that can summon a buttload of spiders. I'll have to look this up. Guys, I think Matt died. I'm not died. I don't think the spider got to me. I'm responding to... If you guys didn't know, I respond to YouTube comments. Benefits there, too. With a new wild ghost, the place the power at the top of the band. There are no spiders here. Well, actually, there was a spider one time last night that came right near my pillow, and I smacked the shit out of Ew. it. Ew. I don't live in a very nice place. I mean, even if you live in a nice place, spiders can sometimes still get in your house. True. And, and everything below it, yeah. shifting at random when they're off cooldown. They can also be given orders, though they only have a single slot and not many commands to start with. Mm. However, when you bring them on more missions, they get more order slots and can use more complicated commands. Cool. Target a specific person. Only use this power. Only use a power if mortals are in the area. It's a cute looking game, but there can be a lot of strategic depth to it, especially as the campaign goes I on. I never thought I would hear a strategic ghost spooking. But, uh... <laughs> 
Here we are. You lure mortals to where they need to be before striking with another. You find ways to create new fetters or shift the existing locations of I mean, a lot of older of games them. were really good and filled with, like, actual love and care, but I think yeah. because of how newer games, we become so jaded to it now. Well, we mostly become jaded to it because it's usually just the same. People try to repeat success when they don't realize that the reason the game before it was so successful is they put so much work into it. And they just want to make a cheap copy. Like... Yeah, and uh, whenever there's, like, a new game makes a new... Like, whenever a new type of game makes becomes really popular, a bunch of companies try to jump on the bandwagon. Yeah. Like, Fortnite or... Souls or games. Like Dark, or Souls games are, like, Dark and Darker or whatever. Different things. If it becomes really popular, you get a bunch of people that either put in a lot of work or some people that don't put in a lot of work and then it just kind of saturates the market which is not fun early games were very experimental we should say honestly Turned the unthinking masses into this yeah matrix. but that's what made it so Being much fun demon, because isn't... people put effort into those early experimental games you're not wrong. yeah some of them yeah some of them sucked that's for sure but they had effort in it and that's what mattered yeah. Now, now when a AAA game a studio makes a game like this, it's the bare minimum with buttloads of microtransactions, and it's just like you guys didn't even try. Yeah. I understand this is from the head, like from the uh, big wigs, but still, that's really, really messed up. Yeah, I will say also one more thing is that uh, I'm glad the indie scene is really picking up, and AAA games seem to be slowly dying. <laughs> Because the indie scene has a lot more diversity in terms of what kind of games can be made and what ideas spout out. The heart of Ghostmaster, but the stakes yeah, begin to really, crash really the party or because, scare everyone in the uh, Apparently, due to the success of Baldur's Gate three and Elden Ring, a lot of AAA studios are upset at those games because they're like, "Holy crap, games with actual effort." We can't allow that. <laughs> it's like when like, Ubisoft people were trying to make fun of, oh. It doesn't have a good UI. I'm like, and people were just making fun of them by putting their UI on top of it. Right. It's kind well, of hilarious. It's like, if you're gonna try to be petty, at least actually have something to back it up, because you guys don't. You really especially don't. not Ubisoft. Especially not. Yeah. Yeah. No. Nice house. So when it fun. escalates to attack the military base, you feel a shift in the game. Oh, attack a military base with ghosts! What the hell? Oh, that is heartbreaking. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, oh, that is heartbreaking that he can't use the howitzer. Or make the ghosts Only use the howitzer. Only terrifying missing children would get old after a while, so the game introduces opposition. <laughs> the mortals have called in a gifted medium. Gifted oh. medium is like saying driest fish. Anyhow, <laughs> if she sniffs you out, Driest she... fish. Actually, um, yes, but they called in a medium to stop your ghost fable. What will you do? Now, right, banish your ghost from the level. But by learning, I would fears send and her a her letter away, that says, "Go away." Oh my god! You can get rid of her like anyone else. Yeah. And then the family calls up royalty, royalty free. Royalty free. Who are the mortals called? This ghost breaker will banish your ghosts if you do not. Who could it be, me? Fable? The ghost breakers are your arch enemy. Some kind of fusion between the original boys uh, and I don't the know, three students. They look royalty free, that's for sure. Apparently, they're a fusion of the original group and the three stooges, because one of them's name's Larry. Hey, they're still dangerous and can team up to banish your troops. Oh, yeah, so they are the three stooges. There's, Cur there's Mo, Larry, and Curly. Unless you bench them in time or scare the breaker, they're gone. Again, they're still a threat that has agency, so you can mess with them like anyone else. Oh, it doesn't mean assaulting their HQ is harder than attacking a regular house, but it's all the same. However, this is where the game starts to change by introducing wards. These mm. are phasmophobic shields that stop you from directly summoning ghosts inside of their areas. You either have to find an indirect way to destroy them, or find a way to get a fetter inside the field and then have the ghosts attack from there. Mm. These aren't a bad idea on their own and do work okay. in some missions, but issues do start compounding with them. One way to create a fetter is that some ghosts have a power to make an irresistible gift that an NPC will pick up. From there, you could use other powers to lure them towards the wards, but sometimes they don't do anything. Oh, Slayers especially oh are... jank from old games, yeah. Also, I'm gonna try and turn up the volume because some people have been complaining about the volume, and we'll see how it goes. If it's more Crypto problems, then I don't know what to do. It rendered I'm my sorry. Gift powerless. People bugging out oh, no. wasn't so an much issue before, but, but now when you're trying yeah. to get one to go to an exact spot, I hope it's better it's for you guys. I've it's been messing around with it while on this video, so I hope 
Uh, just tell me anything Towards more. the objective. And it usually works fine, but the objective-based ones have so many obstacles in the way that their pathfinding is easy to break. It works fine throughout most of the game, it just so happens the spots you need it to progress break down. Don't go back down the stairs. Please, oh, God. No, yeah. The hospital is the most egregious for this, and it could feel like dumb luck sometimes. It's already a game that puts a lot of limits on you, but now it starts pushing into being annoying. The maps are getting larger with more elaborate objectives, and where you could once knock one out in a half hour or so, now it could be hours. It does lean into the strategy and puzzle side more, but doesn't feel that fun compared to earlier missions. Okay. It wasn't bad enough to where I wanted to drop the game, but if you picked it up to have fun scaring people in a fish tank, the right end's oh, here. No, it's, it's also that the breakers and wards become your main opposition. Of and again, a lot that. was cut out here. They wanted you to face down Native American <laughs> shamans, highly trained Yo, Jewish well, exorcists, nope. feds. Air oh, did you hear that? Feds. Yeah, they wanted you to fight. Feds. Become your main opposition. These are... And again... They... Apparently, the, a lot of content was cut from this game. A lot was cut out here. They wanted you to face down Native American shamans, highly trained Jewish exorcists, feds, Why is areas the Jewish to be haunted by a lone across? ghost or even an enemy ghost master, and you'd fight back and forth yeah, to try I, and manipulate the mortals. I don't think they, they realize the kinds how of investigators. inconsistent that is. Hmm. Also, fighting an enemy ghost master sounds interesting, though I'm not sure how that would work. ...and scientists would convince NPCs yeah, it was all rational and make their belief go down. They had oh. a lot of plans to make the challenges more dynamic. Entire cut systems like anger that would affect the NPCs. It's oh. pretty incredible just how much was in some stage of production, but this is what the game managed to ship with. I mean, and it still seems pretty good, all things considered, even without all the things they couldn't ship with. Right. ...up until this point, either. Yeah. For one, you can't investigate a level before deploying your haunters. So it's not clear who to pick, but the recommended spirits will be the ones that you need to free trapped ones in the level. There's some trial and error Oh there. look, there's a the salamander. The basic camera controls are easy enough, but you'll the be interrupted salamander. by reactions of people fleeing, Ooh. and it's easy to skip over a cutscene if one pops oh, up no. suddenly. You can feel the lack what of polish happened? constantly, but when it's fun, brother. it's really fun. Oh my god. Oh. Was it oh. the old one? As the story, like I said before, oh, yeah. it's barren. That's not a 40k salamander. <laughs> It's mainly I, I about freeing an entity called Crusade the against the Eldar. Oh my god. Like I said before, it's barren. It's mainly about freeing an entity called the Darkling, who is so powerful and evil that he'll be a great help to the team. Oh. There's also a mad scientist who wants to use him for his own means, but not much more to it than that. What is interesting okay. is how the story progresses kind of in the background. A lot of the NPCs are recurring characters who will show up for multiple missions. Okay. In a mysterious cabin, you'll run into Bruce Elm. He's had a big oh. night there, and later at the hospital, you can see he's been committed. Uh, I don't they are just oh. petty orders, but they're apparently one of the dudes you scare has been committed to the hospital. A lot of involving character relationships and bits like that in the background. It was planned for ghosts to be the same way, like you might see someone in town with the health of a Morton Joe, and then next level, he might be a ghost you can rescue. Instead, they're much tinier stories and lots of horror jokes. Bill mm. Hudson in the hospital, Vasquez and Gorman were in an accident, and Burke oh. has chest pain. Man, lots of aliens jokes this year. Oh. Anyways, the game originally ended on a cliffhanger where the Ghost Breakers bring an anti-ghost nuke into the city. The sequel oh. would have dealt with this, but since that never happened, the final level became a free download. They brought the bomb to the ghoul room, and you have 30 minutes to disarm it and scare them all out. And okay. they've brought their deadliest servant to bear. You must beware of a new threat. Oh no. The Ghost Breakers have harness captured Astral the Blue oh, Horde damn it. and Alara to create a stay cold ice cream man. Oh Tunes no, Fable, it's an ice cream man. <laughs> no, no, however, Credit. Will we is... defeat Mr. Ice Cream Man. It's extremely deadly, unless you have a ghost that has fire. Oh, if you have a ghost that has fire, then. Magnificent oh, no. work, Ghost Master. You have defeated. Honestly, the previous no. mission is way more of a pain. Infiltrating the wards is much less convoluted in this one. It's still not a level I ever replay, but it's a much better send off than a to be continued. When they're all gone, the grand finale is all your ghosts get to go into the light. Oh. All of your ghosts. Oh. I guess making college kids shit their pants redeem them. <laughs> I guess. This takes a while. Oh, oh. It has it's... a lot of problems, but Ghostmaster's still charming as hell. It is janky and clearly undercooked, but the idea behind the game is just so great. I the feel like I should tell Raikou about keep adding this game. features and polishing things up, but it's a real shame that this is the only game like this. Sure, it breaks down sometimes when a simple cutscene turns into something from a Bollywood mm -hmm. soap opera, but there's you know still what's funny. You know that uh, there is a game called Geist or a TTRPG. You know, uh, for World of Darkness. 
Yeah. And it's all about being a ghost, but instead of, like, surviving and whatnot, you're trying to basically pass on, because that's the end point of your character. Oh. What? Oh. Hi, Platy. Oh, Platy's here. I'll have to increase my the size love. of things. My love. My angle. Ah, hi. Much oh, to like great. strategically Platy's steering here. people. It wasn't like they lacked ideas that more to the formula you either. Said they you just tried to get him out. in the call. I did have a sliver of hope. I know, but I haven't came. prepared the anti platter pushing it. It's supposed to launch him like a catapult into the stew. Mount that maybe we'd oh get a proper goodness. successor, <laughs> but there was no such luck to be had. If you can get it for cheap, it's definitely worth a shot. Parts of it are a mess, but you can't oh. find a game that embodies the spirit of Halloween like this one does. Speaking of True. which, I still need to prepare for that. I'll see you when the hunt begins. I'll admit, there are some YouTubers that can go on and on while watching a video, like they somehow went on for like 11 hours, and I don't know how that was possible to talk about things for 11 hours over a short video. Uh, have a hyperfixation on them? What I intentionally guess. funny it's game broke me with laughter? I, I can talk about Kaneko Man for like about three hours. Oh boy, not Kaneko Man! I guess Limbo not again. Counts. As a kid, there was a you part in Armed and Dangerous that destroyed it, you too. Boy. Thoughts on candy corn. As a kid, I would only bite the yellow ends of them off like a little freak, but I don't <laughs> eat it much nowadays. Candy what is corn. best in life? Conan, you know that answer oh, already. Going to give the new it. Cyberpunk update a try. I did. Mm. I've always really enjoyed the story so of I'd still game, need to finish Cyberpunk 2077. I just... Buggy. There's I only a lot of new games coming out that I want to try. Hours into it. I also didn't expect the return of Alien Isolation, so... that was Wait, what? Which would be scarier to explore in real life, Subnautica or the forest? This question is a lot harder than I thought it would be. Yeah. Because I know what's in both those games. I guess I would still go with Subnautica because being in the ocean would make me wonder what else could just show up anyways. But the sequel to the forest does also open a gigantic Subnautica can of worms and now that game is a lot more scarier In terms of trying to deal with it in real life, because one, you have more dangers. There's different kinds of fish, there's a lot of stuff we haven't even seen. And the fact that there's giant, there's water pressure the deeper you go, and chances are your ship might not be able to handle it. Oh yeah. The forest, you kind of already have more access, and you're on the ground, so you'll be relatively safer, and you have a better chance of surviving if you're at least a decent huntsman. Yeah. Also, there's Crypt Master. We need to force Platy or you to play, because it forces Platy to deal with his worst enemy ever: spelling. Spelling. Oh no. Oh, not not that game with the fact that, not that game with the fact that everything's in black and white, and even the trip masters just like listen. If this is too hard, you can literally just refund it. I'm gonna teach you how. Yes. Uh, anyway, it's a thing, Platy. He literally, the game literally tells you how to refund it if it's too hard. Basically, if you actively choose not to do the tutorial, he's like, okay, I'm just gonna tell you how to refund the game because you're obviously not interested. And he actually I'm tells still. you everything and even says, Well, click support. Then the reason for refunding say, The game is too hard. <laughs> anyway, thank you all so much, and we'll see you guys later. Bye.